Hello, dear listener. In an effort to try to provide more content for the channel, I decided to take a whack at film reviews. Naturally, these films will be in the horror genre, so I figured what better time to kick them off than October. We're all going to be in a mood for some frightening flicks at some point this month. Seeing as we may not always have the time, money, or even the desire to go to the local cinema, I imagine many of us will be killing the lights, wrapping up in a blanket, and firing up Netflix instead. With that said, I hope you enjoy the debut installment of Netflix and Thrill. My review of Bleed. Right here, this is the strongest signal I've ever gotten. What the hell is that? We were brought here for a reason. This is where we're supposed to be. Bleed is nothing more than a film adaptation of a haunted house. No, not an actual haunted house. I'm referring to the commercialized spook houses that pop up in droves around this time of year. I'm sure you've been to at least one in your life. I tend to go to at least one every October and for the most part, they're all the same. One of the biggest complaints I have with these haunted houses is that they're just random. Completely and utterly random. You start out in a room with ghosts, next you're in a room with clowns, then zombies, then werewolves, there's absolutely no rhyme or reason to anything. Bleed had me feeling the exact same way. The film centers around Sarah, an expecting mother played by Chelsea Crisp, and her husband Matt, Michael Steger. The happy couple have just moved into a quaint country home in a small town. Soon after that, the rest of the group arrives, which begins with Sarah's childhood friend, Bree, and Bree's new boyfriend, Dave. Lastly comes in Eric, Sarah's twin brother, and his girlfriend, Skye. The movie wastes no time in establishing each character as a cookie-cutter horror film stereotype. Sarah's the neutral, worried blonde chick with a dark past. Matt is the uptight, nonsense skeptic. Bree might be batshit crazy. Dave is the funny guy. Eric is the douchebag and Skye is the free-spirited hippie. Don't worry about any of them having any further depth or dimension. Have we all painted a picture in our mind? Good. Now we can move on to the core of the film, if that's what you want to call it. Eric the Douche explains that he and Skye have been traveling the country hunting ghosts. A local urban legend of a burned down, supposedly haunted prison gets brought up and it's not long until the group decides to go, despite the protests from both Sarah and Matt. The protests are for contrasting reasons. Matt, being the logical skeptic, believes it's a waste of time while Sarah seems to legitimately be afraid of the paranormal element. You see, it's hinted before this that both her and her buddy Bree experienced seeing apparitions as children. It isn't long until the group arrives to the scene of the destroyed prison, minus Sarah who agreed to only drop them off and pick them back up. The group begins exploring, and that's when shit goes flying face first into the fan. Oh man, where do I begin? The amount of cliches crammed into this film is almost impressive. Almost. Even if we ignore all of them prior to the prison being introduced, shady cops, small hick town, a young group of 20-somethings that decide to spend a weekend in said town, the douchebag who dresses exactly like a textbook douchebag, his free-spirited girlfriend, the interracial couple complete with one token black character, and of course, the group deciding to explore a haunted house location for no legitimate reason. People, all of this happens within the first 20 minutes or so of the film, and sadly, 
that's when things are at their most grounded and logical. As soon as they arrive, more cliches shamble their way onto the screen. The group splits up almost immediately. A couple of them, I'll let you guess who, decide to get high and they find an old book that, surprise surprise, belongs to a demonic cult. Yes, the cliches keep on coming. But what I could say, at least up to this point, was that the film seemingly knew what it wanted to be. Immediately after this mysterious book is found, it's as if three scripts were all thrown around in some type of crazy, drunken party and attempted to be combined into one. Blee did not know what it wanted to be. A ghost film? A slasher fic? Or a cult horror film? So, hey, they did it all. I was still on board at this point though, with an understandable level of trepidation. That's when it began to commit what I believe to be one of the biggest crimes a film can commit. It broke its own rules. That's a tough accusation to make since there really was no rules or explanation from the jump, but after looking back, I realized that nothing made sense. The main demon appeared in the film several times before they even found the magical book, but was then summoned after the chant was said aloud. So, how was he showing up earlier? Why did he need to be summoned at all? What the hell, people? It eventually became nothing but a couple of dumb characters running away from a random assortment of villains in an old creepy building. And again, I say this was nothing but a haunted house in film form. And not even a decent haunted house. For the love of Bieber, the main demon was even trying to do his best Rob Zombie impression the whole time. They even gave him the same X on the forehead. Who were you people trying to fool? The acting was subpar. The special effects were embarrassing. Countless events seemed to happen with no explanations. Vital questions go unanswered, and the ending had us staring at the screen for a couple of minutes wondering if this was all supposed to be a joke. The two positives I could say were, A. The actress who portrayed Skye, Lyndon Smith, was very attractive, and B. If you have a few drinks and enjoy this with some buddies, especially around Halloween, you will more than likely have a couple of laughs at the film's expense. That's right, Bleed. We're not laughing with you. We're laughing at you. Overall, I'd say this film is a solid 1 out of 5. Or as I'd like to say, nope, too shitty. We get it. You love Rob Zombie and you're edgy. Honestly, who funded this garbage?